Our story starts back in 1912 in a little Iowa town called River City, when a fellow named Harold Hill, uh, Professor Harold Hill, if you don't mind, bounces into town on the morning of the 4th of July. Now, Professor Hill comes to the town for the purpose of selling band instruments to the kids. Also uniforms, also instruction books, also lessons. Promising at the end of the summer to form a band. And does he cut him a slot? Why, you'd never dream that this fellow doesn't know one note from another. I did forget to tell you, though, how he got into the town. He came on the train, along with seven or eight other salesmen. Of course, like everybody else when you're on a train, you talk like a train. I'd like to show you what I mean. Uh, Rini, dear, will you please go uh, ch -ch -ch every once in a while to give me a chance to grab a breath? Yes, sir. You can talk, you can talk, you can bicker, you can talk, you can talk, 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 bicker, 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 you can talk all you want, but it's different than it was. No, it ain't, no, it ain't, but you got to know the territory. <laughs> Why, it's a Model T Ford made the trouble, made the people want to go, want to get, want to get, want to get up and go. Seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen, twenty-two, twenty-three miles to the county seat. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Who's going to patronize a little bitty two-by-four kind of store in a little bitty town anymore? What do you talk, what do you talk, what do you talk? What do you get them? What do you talk, what do you talk, what do you talk? What do you get What do you talk, what do you talk, what do you talk? You can Talk, you can bicker, you can talk, you can bicker, you can talk, 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 bicker, 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 you can talk all you want, but it's different than it was. No, it ain't, no, it ain't, but you've got to know the territory. Rainy, you're supposed to just go shh, shh, shh. Yes, sir. Can we do it again? No, dear, we don't have to do it again now. Our hero, Harold Hill, gets off this train in River City, Iowa, population 2,718, I believe. And the first thing that Harold Hill wants to do is to try to stir up a little trouble to call attention to himself. So we find him casting around for some local circumstance upon uh, which to key such a uh, nefarious opening maneuver, as you might say. And right off the bat, he happens to notice a new pool table being delivered into the local billiard parlor right there on the main street. Buttonholing the First River Citizen to pass by, our professor has a crowd around him in no time at all. He says, friends, he says, You've got trouble. Right here, I say trouble, right here in River City. Sure, I'm a billiard player, certainly mighty proud to say. I'm always mighty proud to say it. I consider that the hours I spend with a cue in my hand are golden. Help me cultivate a cool head, horse sense, and a keen eye. Did you ever take and try to give an ironclad lead to yourself from a three-rail billiard shot? Well, just as I say it takes judgment, brains, and maturity to score in a balk line game, I say that any boo can take and shove a ball in a pocket. And I call that sloth, the first big step on the road to the depths of degradation. I say first, medicinal wine from a teaspoon, then beer from a bottle. And the next thing you know, your son is playing for money in the pinchback suit. And he's listening to some big out-of-town Jasper hearing him tell about the horse race gambler. Not a wholesome trot race, no, but a race where they sit down right on a horse. Like to see some stuck-up jockey boy sitting on Dan Patch, make your blood boil, well, I should say. Now, friend, let me tell you what I mean. You got one, two, three, four, five, six pockets in that table. Pockets that mark the difference between a gentleman and a bum with a capital B. It rhymes with B, and that stands for pool. And all week long, the river city used to be frittering away. Say, your young man will be frittering. Frittering away the new time, supper time, short time, too. Get the ball in a pocket, never mind getting dandelions cooled and screen door packs of the beast get pounded. And never mind pumping any water till your parents are caught with a cistern empty on a Saturday night. That's trouble. Lots and lots of big trouble. I'm thinking of those kids in the knickerbocker, shirt tail young, was speaking in that smoke shop window after school. Trouble. Right here in River City. With a capital T, rhymes with P, and it stands for pool. Now, I know all you folks are the right kind of parents. I'm going to be perfectly frank. Would you like to know what kind of conversation goes on while I'm loafing around that hall? Trying out Devo, trying out Cubeb, trying out Taylor Mage like cigarette fiends, and bragging all about how they're going to cover up a telltale breath with Sin Sin one fine night. They leave the pool hall, heading for the dance of the army. That's libertine men, scarlet women, and ragtime, shameless music that will drag your son and my daughter into the arms of a jungle animal instinct masteria. Friends, the idle brain is the devil's playground trouble. Right here in River City, with a capital T, right with T, and it stands for pool. You surely got trouble, 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 trouble. trouble. Gotta figure out a way to keep the young people all around. Come on, 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 come on,
that game with the 15 numbered balls, that's the devil's too. You got trouble, trouble, trouble. Right here, say trouble, right here, River City with a capital T. Rise to see that stands for two. <laughs> that was Rini, of course, uh, imitating our chorus of 24 voices. Well, to get my, uh, my breath back, I will tell you about our hero's next move. His next move is to get on the good side of the local music teacher so that she won't expose him when uh, she finds out that he doesn't know one note from another. She happens to be a young lady named Marion. Uh, Marion the librarian, in fact. She's the librarian all day, and she uh, uh, gives piano at night. I mean, she gives piano for any of the local children whose parents desire them to take. You have to take when you were a kid? Hmm? <laughs> when I was young, most of the kids in our neighborhood took, uh, including me. After all, my mother uh, gave, so I had to take. <laughs> to get back to the story, though, Professor Hill has followed Miss Marion all over town this uh, Fourth of July day, and he has accomplished uh, nothing as yet. We in the audience are a little more fortunate, however, we get to look in on her parlor early that evening while she is uh, giving piano to little Amaryllis, the little neighbor girl from next door. Now, Amaryllis has very nicely played her exercises, and as a reward, she is now being permitted to play her crosshand piece. Little Amaryllis is already getting ready with that crosshand. Here she goes, up and over. In the meantime, Miss Marion goes to the window. It's a beautiful moonlight night. And uh, she is stirred to a little reverie, as you might say, which gives us some kind of an insight into this nice young lady. Good night, my someone. Good night, my love. Sleep tight, my someone, sleep tight, my love. Our star is shining, it's bright as the light. For oh, good night, my love, for oh, good night. Sweet dream, sweet Cricket. <laughs> Along 
of that moonlight and that nice singing of Miss Marion. Back to Harold Hill again, and it's uh, still the night of the 4th of July. It happens to be raining, so the evening celebration takes place in the high school gymnasium. And this is where the professor really gets his chance to tell the River City Zians how glorious and how glamorous and how shining it would be to have a band made up of their own kids parading down the main street in uniform. Johnny, Willie, Teddy, Fred, with the cymbals crashing and the trumpets blaring. Ta -da -da! Well, the song that Professor Hill uses to illustrate uh, such a uh, glittering parade stems from the same melody, by the way, that has just issued forth in the preceding scene from our music teacher. I uh, must admit I did that on purpose to oh, suggest that these two people have possibly more in common than meets the eye. Good night, my someone, good night, my love. Seventy-six trombones led the big parade With a hundred and ten cornets close at hand They were followed by rows and rows Of the finest virtuosos Goes the cream of every famous band Seventy-six trombones played the counterpoint While a hundred and ten cornets played the air Then I modestly took my place As the one and only bass And I umpired up and down the square Now, uh, the town is pretty uh, captivated, I think would not be too strong a word, especially the middle-aged ladies who really get excited when the professor forms them into the ladies' Del Sart auxiliary for the classic dance, if you please. And they do quite a lot of talking at their first meeting, but uh, they don't have anything very good to say about Miss Marion. Maybe he's just because she's too pretty. But uh, for whatever reason, uh, they do gossip about her to Professor Hill, saying, among other things, that uh, she advocates dirty books down at the library. I must tell you that they all wear those big 1912 hats, and when they get to gossiping, all these ladies, well, uh, you know, their hats going up and the feathers flying. It sounds kind of like this. Yes, the ladies say to Professor Hill, this Miss Marion advocates dirty books at the library. Chaucer, Rabelais, Balzac. Cheep, 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 cheep. And down the next block comes the school board. Well, the school board has hated each other for 50 years. But uh, Professor Hill has, in the meantime, formed them into a barbershop quartet. And this is the result. Good night, ladies. Good night, ladies. Good night, ladies. We're going to leave you now. Harold, uh, in the meantime, gets them so, <laughs> so engrossed in, in what they're doing, you know, the ladies and the school board, that he has a chance to slip into the library and make a little time with Marion, or at least try. Uh, in the meantime, however, we better find out a little more about Miss Marion and why she isn't more popular with the home folks, because I think I left you right at that point a minute or two ago. Uh, Marion, you know, hasn't even got a fellow, and her mother is particularly annoyed about that uh, phase of it. In fact, one evening out on the front porch, she says to her daughter, she says, Marion, at your age, you can't be waiting around for any white night, you know. Well, Marion gets a little exercise at this. She says, I'm not waiting for any white night, Mama. And she proceeds to enlighten us and her mother with just what kind of a fella she is waiting for. She's sitting right there on the steps. It's evening. And she's doing her embroidery when she starts to sing, but she puts that aside pretty soon. My white night, nothing 
Quite a lot more things happen in this first act, including a, uh, oh, I guess you'd call it a whispering ballet uh, right there in the library. You know, you dash and speak above a whisper in the library. Everybody goes, shh. And Harold is in there trying to make a little time with uh, the elusive Miss Marion. He says, Marion. Madam Librarian, what can I do, my dear, to make it clear? I love you madly, madly, Madam Librarian. Marion, heaven help us if the library caught on fire and the volunteer hose brigade men had to whisper the news to Marion. Madam Librarian, what can I do, my dear, to make you here? I need you madly, madly, Madam Librarian, Marion. If I stumble and I busted my whatchamacallit, I could lie on your floor unnoticed till my body had turned to care. Madam Librarian. Now in the mood. 
moonlight. A man could sing it in the moonlight. And a fellow would know that his darling had heard every word of his song with the moonlight. Helping along, but when I try in here to tell you, dear, I love you madly, madly, Madam Librarian, Marion. It's a long, long cold I can never win for the civilized world accepts as unforgivable sin any talking out loud with any librarian, but says that. Madam Librarian. Now, there's also the Wells Fargo wagon finale in that first act. Uh, this Wells Fargo scene, by the way, has to do with Marion's little lisping brother, Winter. And uh, also it has to do with Mayor Shin's growing suspicions that Professor Hill is a phony. There's some more gossip about Miss Marion in there, too, to the effect that she may not altogether be the innocent uh, maiden that she appears. Uh, this development, uh, however, only pleases Harold Hill. In his words, the sadder but wiser girl for me. No wide-eyed, eager, wholesome, innocent female. No, sir, that kind of girl spins webs. No spider ever. Listen, boy, I'd prefer to take a chance on a more adult romance. No do young miss who keeps resisting all the time she keeps insisting. No wide-eyed, wholesome, innocent female. No, sir, why, she's the fisherman. I'm the fish, don't you see that? Plop, I flinch, I shy. When the last of the delicate air goes by, I smile and I grin. When the gal with a touch of sin walks in, I hope and I pray for Hester to win just one more A. The sadder but wiser girl, the girl for me. The sadder but wiser girl for me. Now, uh, when I wrote that song, I planned it to fit together with My White Knight so that I could uh, express these apparently contrasting views, the contrasting views of our hero and heroine, express them uh, simultaneously, as you could say. Uh, Sort of like this, uh, Miss Marion. No wide-eyed eager, no, 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 that kind of girl who spins webs, no spider ever. Listen, boy, I prefer to take a chance on a more adult romance. No do young Miss Suki resisting all the time she keeps insisting. No wide-eyed wholesome innocent female. No sir, why she's the fisherman, I'm the fish. Don't you see that? I flinch and I shy when the last of the delicate air goes by. I smile and I grin. When the gal with the touch of sin walks in, I hope and I pray for Hester to win just one more A. The sadder but wiser girl, the girl for me. The sadder but wiser girl for me. <laughs> so, after all that excitement, we never found the place for that counterpoint duet in the uh, show. So, uh, now that I think of it, you album listeners have now had a little something that the theater audiences didn't get to hear. Well, moving on into the second act, you, uh, you get some more dancing. For instance, you get a number called Shapoopy, which shows the Del Sart Ladies Auxiliary practicing uh, classic attitudes under Professor Hill's direction. Uh, attitudes wherein each lady tries her best to resemble one or more Grecian urns, with a book on her head, of course, for posture. Now, a woman who kisses on the very first date is usually a hussy, and a woman who kisses on the second time out is anything but fussy. But a woman who waits till the third time round, ahead in the clouds, feet on the ground, she's the girl you're glad you found. She's sure shapoopy, 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 the girl who's hard to get. Shapoopy, 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 but you can win her yet. That continues on into the ballet. The school board, in the meantime, prodded by suspicious Mayor Shin, demands Professor Hill's credentials. In fact, uh, to quote the mayor, he says, get his credentials or get him in jail. The professor uh, gets him off the subject, however, 
by A, maneuvering them under a lamppost, and B, striking up a barbershop quartet song. Fly the road, I'm home again, road, to get the sun back in my sky. Fly the road, I'm home again, road, about a thousand kisses shy. Ding dong ding, can't you hear the chapel bell chime? Ding dong ding, at the least suggestion of a question. Right along, I'm home again, Rose, without a sweetheart to my name. Light a rose now, everyone. That I am hoping you're the same So here is my love song Not fancy or fine. That's a falsetto tenor, you gotta have one in the barbershop, you know Light a rose, oh won't you be mine Well down the street Miss Marion is sitting on her front porch, and she is confessing her love for this gentleman, Professor Hill, to the moonlight, but, of course, inadvertently to us in the audience. Dream of her now, dream of her then. Bravely tell you, but only when we dream again. Sweet and low, sweet and low, how oh, sweet and Quartet. Happens to be a lamppost in front of Miss Marion's house, so the inevitable happens. Dream of a night, to get the sun back in my sky. Dream of a night, to get the sun back in my sky. Dream of a night, to get the sun back in my sky. Dream of a night, to get the sun back in my sky. Can't you hear the chapel bell chime? Ding dong ding. At the least, we dream of a about the question. Light a road, home again, road, without a sweetheart to my name. Light a road, now everyone knows that I am hoping you're the same. So here's a love song, not fancy or fine. Yeah, you held on to that last note nicely, dear. I couldn't quite make it. <laughs> also, I was interested to see how I was going to finish that on the piano. Well, there's quite some more developments in the second act that uh, lead to everything coming out all right in the end. And uh, although you uh, listeners there may find this difficult to believe, Professor Hill and Miss Marion do finally fall in love right there on the footbridge. As Miss Marion puts it, Bye. 
But I never saw them swinging. No, I never saw them at all till there was music. And there was music, and there were wonderful roses. They tell me in sweet, fragrant meadows of dawn. But I never 